Now, bone density loss, second long-term side effect that's talked about for the same reason, except for this time, if you're not getting enough calcium, your body is like, well, where do I have the most calcium at? So it goes and gets calcium from your bones, which is where the most of your calcium in your body is stored, bones and teeth. Same idea. What's cool is that weight training will help spare that because your bones have to support weight. They have to support those muscles pulling on them. And for the same reason that your body won't give up muscle if it has a load being placed on it, it won't give up bone tissue because it has a load being placed on it. So weight training negates both of those things. Well, it helps with the uh, muscle loss and the bone loss. It's good to take some calcium supplements if you can. It's, if you are somebody with osteoporosis or you're a post-menopausal female, you really need to look at these indications with some skepticism because if you are in those categories with osteoporosis or you're a postmenopausal female, your ability to lay down new bone tissue is severely degraded than somebody who's young and somebody who doesn't have those issues. And you may actually have more harm from the harm than good by taking this medication. And even if you do do these things correctly, it could be an issue. So speak with your doctor about it. But it is very important that you maintain your bone mass and that you maintain your muscle mass. Weightlifting, eating adequate things will help. What kind of food would be good to do both of those things that also shouldn't be too rough on the stomach for most people? I think Greek yogurt is great. High in calcium covers that. Protein shakes are good. Essentially, any of your dairy-based protein products would be helpful for both things. Cottage cheese, milk, all those things. But beyond that, you still just need to be eating a healthy diet. Calcium supplements are great. Whey protein is great for these two things. 